Hi children, hope you all are doing well. So we are back. So in the last video we recapitulated about versatile carbon, ionic, metallic and covalent bond. Today we are going to understand how carbon forms covalent bond and why. Well I hope you have tried to find out that 12 is the mass number of carbon written before C as a superscript and 6 is the atomic number also written before C but as a subscript. Whoa, 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 so many information, right? No worries, you can pause this video, relax, absorb, understand, write, analyze, then proceed further. You can always rewind back. You can always watch the clip anytime. It's for you all. We know reactivity stability of element is explained as their tendency to attain noble gas configuration. That is, to attain a completely felt outer shell to be stable. While elements forming ionic compounds achieved by either gaining or losing electron from the outermost shell, carbon atoms instead share electrons with the other atom to attain noble gas configuration. Remember, we have learned this in the last video. Electronic configuration? Shell? What are these? Students, as you can see in the picture that I've drawn, N is the nucleus of an atom and surrounding the nucleus there are different shells, K, L, M, N, where electrons are arranged or distributed. Therefore, an electron shell forms the outside structure or part of every atom. There are different shells from K to Q depending on the energy levels. K is the nearest to the nucleus, then comes L and so on as you can see in the picture. Alright, can you see these orange dots around the nucleus? They are nothing but electrons distributed in the shells. For instance, K has a capacity of 2 electrons, L has a capacity of 8 electrons, M has a capacity of 18 electrons and N has a capacity of 32 electrons depending upon the atomic size of an atom. Hmm, how do we know about the capacity of electrons in each shell? Well, there is a formula for determining the maximum number of electrons in each shell. That is by 2n squared. As simple as that, 2n squared. For example, if the distribution of electron is done in the k shell, so n will be 1. If it is distributed among K and L, N will be 2. If distribution of electrons is done in the K, L and M shell, so N will be 3. And if it is K, L, M and N, N will be 4. Simple. Pause the video and look at the picture carefully to understand how the electrons are distributed in the shells using the formula 2n square. Okay, as we know now, the atomic number of carbon is 6. So the electronic distribution in carbon will be 2 in K shell and 4 in L shell. Remember, the capacity for K shell is 2 electrons. So among the 6, 2 electrons are in the K shell and the rest 4 in the L shell. Okay, as discussed, carbon has 4 electrons in its outermost shell. I have drawn two pictures for you. One is in the left side and the other one is in the right side. Now two things can happen. Firstly, either gain four electrons from the other atom and become an anion. So carbon can either gain four electrons from the other atom and become an anion. Look at the picture on the left side. Secondly, it can lose all the four electrons and become happy with being a cation. Look at the picture on the right side. What do you think? Pause the video, get your notebook and start drawing these electronic configuration and try to see how the give and take is happening between the carbon atoms. Remember, electrons equals to proton. 
now think about it are the protons and electrons equal in number now i repeat remember electrons equals to proton now think about it are the protons and electrons equal in number now no not at all moreover in the first case look at the picture and listen to me carefully if it gains four electrons it would be difficult for the nucleus to balance or hold 10 electrons that is extra four electrons again look at the picture carefully and listen to me carefully too if it lose four electrons it would require so much energy to remove the four electrons leaving six proton in the nucleus and only two electrons therefore no balance equals to no stability i repeat no balance equals to no stability most of the bonded carbon forms a single bond denoted by a single short straight line hmm. look at this picture these two carbon atoms they share the electrons with each other and form the single bond which is also called pair of bonding electrons easy right they share one electron from each other forming a single bond example of such bond are many here is one for you look at the picture on the left side here is a structure of ethene so you can see two carbon atoms share one electron from each other forming a single bond same goes for the hydrogen atoms carbon forms double and triple bonds too let's take an example of ethylene where you can see a double bond is formed between two carbon atoms meaning two pairs of electrons are shared so double bonds carbon as it forms triple bond too you can see in this picture it's a molecular structure of ethene c2h2 where you can see that two carbon atoms share three electrons from each other forming three pairs of electron for you 